Supreme Court Monday adopted a formal code of conduct following months of scrutiny for undisclosed trips and gifts. Justice Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito are two in particular who have faced questions. The code begins with a statement saying there had been, quote, the misunderstanding that the justices regard themselves as unrestricted by any ethics rules. Their effort at correcting that misunderstanding contains a few major principles. One, uphold integrity and independence. Two, avoid impropriety. And three, be fair, impartial, and diligent. The code also includes guidelines for recusal and outside speaking engagements. CBS News Chief Legal Correspondent Jan Crawford joins us now from the court. So, Jan, going back in history, how would this code have treated the gifts and travel given to Justice Thomas, Alito, Sotomayor that were a part of the run-up to creating this code of ethics in the first place? Well, you know, that's kind of what we think is really driving a lot of this, right? I mean, you've seen Justice Thomas and some of the other, other justices under intense media scrutiny for accepting gifts and travel from some of their wealthy friends, uh, other justices uh, doing events to promote their book and getting book royalties. There's been a lot of media coverage. Senate Democrats have really jumped on that and says it calls into question the entire legitimacy of the Supreme Court. They say in this code of conduct, it's very clear, it closely tracks the code of conduct that all lower court judges have to follow. So that would now uh, suggest that those kind of gifts and travel would be impermissible. But here's the rub. Those gifts and travel, when they did them, uh, there wasn't clear it was banned at all. And in fact, those rules changed just last year. So the justices said last year and earlier this year uh, that they wouldn't do those kind of travel and gifts anymore because the rules were different. The rules were new. And today they're saying they're going to follow uh, those new rules, just like they've already told us. So it wouldn't, yes, they, they it would apply to the gifts and travel that they did years ago uh, that they said they're not going to do anymore, uh, but they're not doing that anymore. <laughs> I think the bottom line is that this is the code of conduct that people have said the Supreme Court needs to do. They've been considering doing it for years. I mean, I've heard them talk about this for years up here. And now today they're saying, okay, here you go. It's basically what we had to do when we were federal appeals court judges. And that's what we've been doing all along. So they are trying to hit this, this target of legitimacy, right? And you mentioned all the political forces working on them. Does the code of conduct, and this is a tough question to answer because one doesn't know, but, but are, is there an enforcement mechanism? Is there uh, sufficiently, uh, sufficient stringency in this code of conduct to, to answer those questions of legitimacy, or are we still going to be battling this even though this has been issued? John, you have covered politics for a long time, and I am sure you know that this is not going to satisfy Senate Democrats. Um, this is a code of conduct. It's similar to what all federal judges now have to adhere to, but there is no enforcement mechanism, so to speak. It's up to the justices to enforce compliance. And already uh, we're seeing some of those Senate Democrats, uh, like Senator Dick Durbin from Illinois, hammering that. Like, this is now we're just leaving it to the justices. This doesn't go far enough. This isn't enough. But here's the problem with that. The Supreme Court is not like the other lower courts. The Constitution of the United States creates the Supreme Court. It's the only court that is specifically created by the Constitution. And the Constitution also provides the enforcement mechanism for misconduct against justices, and that is impeachment. It doesn't suggest any other role for Congress in looking at whether they're complying with ethic rules or not. So that's kind of the rub there. I mean, the justices are going to argue that this goes as far as they can go. Senate Democrats are, go are going to say, this is totally inadequate and they've not gone far enough. But the main thing is they have got a code of conduct. That's what they've been calling for for years. The justices have said that they need to do it. Uh, they're all on board with doing it and all nine of them have signed it and agreed to it going forward. Now they're just going to argue about, well, how do we really know they're following it and who's going to enforce it? A rare unanimous decision from the court, Jan Crawford <laughs> right. at the Supreme Court. Thank you.